Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Manuel Graphics tutorial. I know it's been a long, long, long time since I've made a tutorial, around four months or so, perhaps five even, but I'm just back before um, most of my school, like the my last year of school is about to happen and I'm just going to try and make one before things get too busy and I don't have any time in the, whole, in the school term to do it. So I'll just show you um, just the thumbnail I made for the video. So we're just going to be creating a wireframe um, iPhone design in um, Inkscape today. So I'll just show you some previews that I already made. So over here. Um, so let's zoom in. Have a look. So this is um, some wireframe iPhones designs I made. And there's one, a larger one. Yeah, this one's a bit out of proportion. I think this one's more um, in proportion to actually how an iPhone looks like. But today we'll be making um, one of these in Inkscape. So I'll just clear some space, move over here. I'll just move this. The first thing we want to do when we open up Inkscape is to make sure we go to View, um, Document Properties, and I usually remove the Show Page Border. I then go to view, make sure it's set on custom, and then go view, zoom, one to one. Also make sure you've got your align and distribute, um, distribute menu up over here, so just click this icon and your fill and stroke up here. So you've got those two here. So we're going to start off by developing the um, borders, so we select our rectangle tool and we just gonna make us a rectangle around that shape. Um, I've got the stroke set to two and I've got no fill. I'm also then going to select um, the edit paths by nodes tool here. And I'm just gonna select this circle here and drag down in order to create the rounded um, corners that are prominent on an iPhone something like that. I'm then going to grab this tool again and create another rectangle like such. Basically with the same proportions as the other one and just um, drag and click it in. You can also just duplicate this outer one and make it smaller but I just it's quicker for me to do it like this. Um, Make sure you select the middle one and the top one and make sure you hit the center to make sure it's all centered up nicely. So that's the border complete. We're now going to create the iPhone screen. So to do this, again, select our rectangle tool and just quickly adjust some things here at straight edges. And I'm not sure if I want it bigger. Yeah, I'll make it bigger. like so and I'm just going to align it into the center by selecting it and selecting the holding shift and selecting that like so and I'll just make the top slightly taller like that so that is the screen done now we're going to add a little um, bit of curvature on the screen but not as much as that. Like that, that will do quite nicely. The next thing we're going to do is create the um, home buttons. So to do this, just grab your circle or ellipse tool and hold control and shift on your keyboard and create a circle as such. Drag your circle over and I'm just going to align it the center of my um, rectangle by selecting both of these and I'm just going to hold shift and drag it down. Sorry, hold control and drag it down. As you can see it's too big so zoom in slightly and hold control and shift and pull in like so. 
The next thing we're going to do is duplicate it. So hit Control D on your keyboard and then grab the right diagonal arrow and hold Shift and Control and decrease the size like so. So we've got a nice home button here. Now we're going to do the decals or not decals, the, um, I think it's a microphone and a, a microphone and a front camera here. I can't remember. I don't actually own an iPhone, but, um, I believe that's what it is up there. So to do this, we'll grab our rectangle creation tool and create a long bar shape like this, position it around the center, select it. Holding shift, select the out the inner circle and hit this to center align it. I think it's that's too big. Something like that. Make sure it's still got the stroke too. Oh, let's redraw this. Something like that. That's better. And we're going to make the rounded rectangle more prominent. So it's like that. So fully extend it. So instead of having it around here, we want to fully around it. So it's got a capsule shape. And we're just going to holding shift. So yeah, holding, just use your arrow keys and slightly move it down like so. We're then going to get our circle tool or ellipse tool. And we're going to create a small circle like so. And use your arrow keys to move it across and position it accordingly. And then the last one, we're going to duplicate this circle and bring it above here. But with this circle, we're going to change the width of the stroke to one and make it smaller. Like so. Now I've just noticed that our outer border is actually too far away from our inner one on one side. So I'm just going to straighten up all those lines that are not quite how I want them. just tightening the shape basically making it more streamlined now the last thing we're going to do is add some side add some side oh, we can leave on two for now add some side icons so the um, display on and off and the plus and minus and volume so to do this Again, grab our rectangle tool, create a capsule shape like so. Duplicate our capsule shape, move it across, but and then straighten out those. Extend the edges. Select our capsule shape and then select our rectangle shape and hit path cut path then select this path the side so that cuts the two objects into two different paths select this one and hit delete now we've got this um, rounded rectangle shapes which we can decrease and move it Can zoom in for this still a bit too long for the the home one get in like that Make sure we select our curves Just 
still a bit too long. That is good. And then we can just control D to duplicate. And then around here, we can create a longer one for the volume. And that is how we create a wireframe iPhone within Inkscape. And you can um, go about grouping them all these together by selecting them all and hitting the group, and then you can adjust the stroke and all for each individual one, depending on how you want it. But then select this and it comes as a group. You can move it around, do what you like with it. Um, you can then export this file as a PNG and um, drag into Photoshop and finish up like this. So thank you very much for watching and I shall catch you in my next video tutorial.